Congressman, how are you, sir? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Jeff. I'm, I'm doing great. It's a beautiful sunny day in Arizona again. Well, uh, it's a great state, and uh, give our uh, viewers and uh, listeners around the country an update. How is Arizona doing as far as uh, reopening and uh, moving forward? Doing pretty well. I think we're, we're opening up a little slower than I would like, but uh, we're ostensibly fully open. I, I was out uh, driving around yesterday in the evening, and and uh, my, my old favorite restaurant's back open again. And so there, there's, there's a lot happening here. Um, that's good to know. Uh, would you agree with me? Uh, we've got to move uh, full steam ahead with this reopening and get this economy working again. We just got a new unemployment report out. 38.6 million Americans have filed for unemployment claims since the beginning of the uh, pandemic. Yeah, Jeff, you are 100 percent right. I, I've been advocating this for five weeks because we know where the vulnerable population is. We can protect that vulnerable population as much as we can. But you know what? Uh, there are some. Uh, we've created a different kind of public health crisis by closing up the economy, but we've also created the uh, uh, the economic uh, devolution of the economy by keeping it closed. So we got to open it up, and we need to get out there and and get going. And and we're seeing that in Arizona. This this uh, my gauge for economic activity in part, and this my own anecdotal uh, uh, gauge is. How much traffic is there on the roads? And uh, a month ago, there was no traffic on in uh, the Phoenix metro area, really. And uh, yesterday, we started really seeing it uh, when I was out. Pretty, It's coming back. It's coming back. So that tells me people are starting to move. They're starting to open up shops. They're starting to, to get out there. And that's a good thing. You know, you tweeted... Um uh, I think it was uh, yesterday, something that I completely agree with. You said the uh, cure to COVID-19 was always worse than the disease. And uh, I think people need to realize the not only the economic costs of a, of a lockdown, but also the health costs. And uh, I continue to pound that uh, drum because I think people uh, think, oh, well, we're just going to lock it down and shut it down. That's for our health. No. When you take away people's jobs and create poverty and create homelessness and create despair, uh, and create situations where people are going to be turning to opioids and uh, you've got untreated health problems. There is a massive health cost with uh, shutting down the economy. So I think that's going to be greater than uh, the coronavirus uh, death toll, sadly. So it's another reason we need to open up, uh, Congressman. Jeff, you're right. There was a study that came out last week that said that you're going to have more deaths resulting from uh, non-treatment of serious illnesses so something like I, I was speaking with a, an expert yesterday, doctor, he's telling me 80 percent of brain surgeries have been put on hold during this uh, uh, epidemic. You've got 650,000 people on chemotherapy uh, in the United States, and half of them uh, were frightened into not going to get their chemotherapy treatment. You've got uh, every month something like 150,000 people uh, uh, we, did, we are told they have cancer, and we are not doing anywhere near those screenings. They're not finding out they have cancer, and cancer doesn't wait for coronavirus or for treatment because right. they're somehow elective. That's the problem that we've seen on that side of the, the coin as well. Uh, Congressman Andy Biggs is with us, represents the 5th District in Arizona. He was recently appointed to the President's Congressional Task Force on Reopening the American Economy. Uh, congratulations for that, Congressman. Uh, so uh, it seems to me Republicans are trying to push toward reopening, getting us uh, going again. I keep hearing from Democrats and these so-called health experts, it's too dangerous. Uh, we could start a second wave. More people could die. Uh, why are there so many uh, Democrats and members of the media and health experts pushing back against the desire to reopen our economy? Well, it's, you know, their motivation spread all across the board. Some of them is for political reasons. They don't want uh, they don't want the economy to come back at all because the economy uh, had President Trump's fingerprint all over it. He was really successful. Uh, he was headed to re-election, the best economy ever. So uh, that's one reason they don't want it to come back. The other reason is uh, a lot of them want control and to irrigate power and to move. I mean, don't forget you've got uh, a leadership in the House of uh, representative, U.S. House of Representatives, uh, Pelosi, Clyburn, all saying 
that this is an opportunity to, to remake America in the way that they want it to be. Uh, and so you had this uh, move to a leftist uh, kind of taking away uh, rights, irrigating power into the center. Uh, that's why states are closing up. I mean, so you have a, a whole host of, of reasons why, um, but none of them make sense because none of them are good for the country. Right. They, haven't, they, they haven't taken our, our needs as a nation and put those first. Another thing that I worry about, Congressman, is really the uh, shredding of our Constitution, the uh, infringement on our liberties, uh, t keeping us away from churches, keeping us away from expressing our First Amendment rights to protest and assemble. Uh, it's been amazing to see uh, snitch lines uh, started where people are calling in, calling in their neighbors, calling in businesses. I'm hearing uh, that there'll be mandatory vaccines and what about our constitutional rights here? I mean, it just seems like uh, they're under assault. They are fully under assault. Um, you know, you, you've outlined everything there. I would just tell you, one of the things that I do, it's every day, um, my staff updates on my website, bigs.house.gov, a list of, of constitutional uh, rights violations that are going on around this country. And, uh, I mean, uh, Attorney General William Barr said about two and a half weeks ago, he said that you don't, your uh, rights are not suspended in a national emergency, and they're not suspended. And so this notion that uh, you're going to go in and uh, arrest pastors or the congregants and, and, and right. go after them, it's, it's, it's outrageous. And you know what, Jeff, I've been very concerned at the acquiescence of Americans I know. Uh, to this <laughs> violation. I know. Well, yeah. don't you think, Congressman, it's because they're, they're watching the media, they're hearing all this doom and gloom and hysteria, these so-called health experts, the Dr. Fauci's of the world that tell us we can't do anything or there'll be a recurrence of the virus. And, and I think they're just, they were frightened into submission. And, and I, I was also surprised at how willing people were to give up their rights. I, I'm sensing more people are now fighting back, but it was sort of scary to see. And... And I, very worrisome, and we have about a minute. Uh, what can we do about that to uh, try to restore our uh, country's faith and our Constitution and get people fired up again? Well, you're right. It's fear. They're using fear as a, as a motivator. So what I say is we need to get more and more people out there that we've seen more and more protesting and speaking up and, and using their right. We need Congress to um, basically hold these states that are uh, a little tyrants uh, we need to hold them accountable. And then I think the third thing is we need to be going in with lawsuits. The, the attorney general, the executive branch, needs to be filing lawsuits on, on uh, due process claims and uh, uh, constitutional liberty claims under the 14th Amendment and, and other amendments. And they also need the private sector, uh, uh, um, nonprofit sector of uh, attorneys need to get in there and start uh, bringing these guys to bear as well. I mean, that kind of pressure is what's, what's needed to, to restore our, our liberties. I'm afraid that once liberties are taken away, it's right. just so difficult to get them back. So we've got, we can't, well we can't let them go away right now. Well said. Congressman, keep up the great work. Hopefully we can have you back on soon. Thank you so much for joining us.